The data is in. Return to office mandates aren't worth the talent risks. I am going to throw something out there right away before even reading this article that I somehow doubt it. Okay, I'm just going to throw this out here. I think that right now, at the time being, I think that this take is a very ephemeral take. Okay, I'm just, I, this is what I think is I think that this makes way more sense in a world in which still offers tons of remote work. If the world starts going towards less and less remote work, I think this whole return to office mandates are going to become less and less of a talent risk. I think right now, while the world still is in a huge amount of flux and maybe maybe remote remains the, the de facto standard, maybe it doesn't, then I think you, there's an argument here. But I don't think we know what the next while is going to be. All right, I'm just, that's... I'm just letting you know my base take when I'm going to read this article because that's kind of the platform I'm working off of, which is I don't know if we even know what's going to be the world in five years. All right. Uh, anyways, nearly three quarters of executives say return to office mandates are a source of leadership conflict. Crazy. I can't believe that. Lack of work-life balance ranks among the top five reasons employees quit. What do you think is worse? Work-life balance or having a bad manager? One in the chat for bad manager, two for work-life balance. I see a lot more twos than I was expecting. I was I was seeing a lot more twos than I was expecting. I actually thought it would uh, I actually thought it'd be more exclusively ones than twos. And what I mean by that is that a bad manager can ruin like every part of your day, whereas work-life balance can ruin parts of your day. A bad manager guarantee work-life balance issues. Yeah, it, it can most certainly. Bad manager ruins uh, the job for sure. For me, a bad manager is like number one reason why I'd want to leave. Work-life balance seems like something you could potentially change, right? I feel like with a good manager and bad work-life balance, I could turn that job into a good work-life balance. Pull it. It's not that interesting. I just wanted to see some zero, uh, ones and twos. Just to see, I just wanted to generally gauge where people are. There's by far more ones than twos. Big picture. Return to office mandates uh, carry a steep cost. Over the last 12 months, 63% of HR leaders report an increase in ex uh, expectations for employees to return to uh, the office. Many organizations who have encouraged on-site work but see low compliance are resorting to RTO mandates. RTO, return to office. But 74% of HR leaders cite these mandates as a sort of source of conflicts. <laughs> I am not trying to be mean to this article, but this is what I would call a no-shit Sherlock moment. It's kind of like, hey, we're going to make a massive change to policy. My goodness, people find this to be unsettling. It's just like, really? Yeah. I can also agree that if you were to change things, it would it would most certainly cause problems, right? All right. The benefits prove uh, to be uh, modest at best and amid a rising well-being crisis, waning trust between employees and their employers, a competitive talent market, it's high time to ask whether the benefits of RTO mandates are worth the risk. All right, let's see. Factors that contribute to lower intent to stay in a job. Average employees, discretionary effort, employee engagement, intent to stay. I'm having a hard time reading this thing. Uh, Gen Z employees, just all of them. High performing employees, intent to stay goes down with no changes in these two. Gen Z employees, are they saying re return to office mandates cause this change? Intent to stay doesn't change in Gen Z because Gen Z never intended to stay anyways. They're just completely stoked about leaving no matter what. So it's just like, eh, they didn't even change anything. They still want to get the hell out of the office. Uh, millennial employees, down 10%. I could see that. I could see that. Uh, what an absolutely worthless way to cut data. I'm having a very hard time reading this. I assume this means when you do RTO, this is what it, what it means. And I'm not sure what discretionary effort means also. And I'm not sure how you measure employee engagement. Right? Why is there separate to one for just women? Well, the hard part is, is that I would assume that women Gen Zs don't have a change versus women millennials seem to line up. What, like, what, I mean, the problem is, is this type of cut section with these type of cut sections show that right now it looks like there's a generational problem. So cutting it this way might be a bit confusing. Though I am curious about that. I wonder if there is a difference here. I, I'd actually, I'd, I'd want to hear more reasonings why. There's a difference, and I wish if they would have cut it on women, they should have cut it on men too. And so that way we could have seen, is there an actual difference on the other side? Because then it would have been it would have been a more interesting cut to see if there is a, is a, if there's a difference between those two. But we don't actually know the other, we don't actually know the other cut, which makes it impossible to know if there is a real, if there is a, if there is some sort of bimodal nature or not. I don't know, not enough data. Managers, managers want to leave, which is also kind of confusing on that one. They need better data scientists. They need a data scientist. Does da I assume dash means no change. 
really bad data analysis on this one. I agree with that. Um, all right. Okay. Okay. Return to office mandates are high risk. Issues with work-life balance ranks among top five reasons employees uh, give uh, give for leaving an employer. On average, employees at organizations that implement RTO mandates report lower intent to stay compared to those who, organiza organizations who did not. I mean, again, this is such a this is such an obvious thing to point out. And what I mean by that is that if you have company structure around being remote, people will develop a life around being remote. You then say you must return to office. Of course, this is going to cause people who have developed a life around and actually enjoy being remote the desire to leave. Like I don't, I don't really understand how this is how this is not just like okay, this is obvious. Uh, article is written by AI and was fed some stats. I I don't think so. High performers, women and millennials, three groups that prize. Let's see, high performers, women and millennials, three groups that uh, prize flexibility. Okay, you've actually now can this this one right here has now just convinced me that this is written by an AI because it does suggest that average employees don't value flexibility or Gen Z doesn't value flexibility because women aren't high performers or millennials. Classic, classic. She's correct. She's absolutely correct. She is neither a millennial nor a high performer. It's just not a, it's not a thing. Venn diagrams don't even touch each other. Are you sure about that? <laughs> Is this, am I really getting, am I getting burned again by, by AI articles? All right, well, let's keep going and see where this AI article is going. High performers, by the way, guys, how is this getting higher ranked on this? Oh, I need more people participating in the PrimeGen React, okay, so I know which articles are actually good. I need somebody out there. We need a vetting system for these articles. If only there was a vetting system for these articles. If only there was a vetting system for these articles. No one reads beyond the title, I know. It's fair. No one reads beyond the title, so okay. That, I mean, fair. Um, I don't get paid enough for that. Fair. Fair, Bisco. Bisco, you actually pay me. You don't pay enough? I've been posting to the Prime Gen. Yeah, I don't, I don't read the Prime Gen. Um, high performers may feel especially resentful about mandates, particularly if they maintain performance oh, let's see, or over-delivered during the pandemic. They may perceive RTO mandates as a signal of mistrust from management. I don't care what anyone says. Being in person is always going to have better collaboration results. I know people say it's not true. I hear you. Okay, I, I get it. But when you're talking to somebody in person, just things happen that are different than if you try to, it doesn't. Of course it does. Absolutely it does. Because there's all these things that happen that aren't in meetings. They just don't. They just don't. Have you ever had that thing where you're working on a project and you're typing along and all of a sudden something comes up and you're really pissed about it and you go, oh, gosh. And then literally your your cube mate goes, yo, what's up? You weren't going to talk to that person to begin with. They just simply happen to be near you, hear you express some sort of frustration, and then just start talking to you about it. That cannot happen remote. There's just a difference working in, re uh, working in office versus remote. And I understand that not all offices maintained this. Some offices are probably awful, right? Some offices are probably absolutely awful at this and... Remote is actually probably better because the people you work with is probably awful, right? You good, fam? You good, fam? But there's always going to be something about working in person. Body language is hugely important. Have you ever talked to somebody on the phone or especially over text and realize that they meant something different after you talked to them in person or you don't realize how upset somebody was until you talked to them in person versus not in person? Like all these things are very, very real. Here, bro, try this algo. It's just like, in-person communication contains a whole range of things. Uh, I watched a video essay about this. <laughs> there's there's a lot of study that shows that you cannot, there's some things you cannot do. There's studies showing parts of your brain aren't active when talking over the phone versus in per person. There's a whole bunch of stuff that just simply does not exist when you don't interact with the real world. I understand that we don't want this to be true, okay? We have reflective neurons in our brain that make us act like the other person. When one person starts getting uncomfortable, you can start feeling the uncomfortableness. Unless if you, of course, are a bit acoustic, which a lot of us are acoustic, so we probably don't really feel that. But this is real, okay? I know this might be hard. Frosty Balls, you're like, oh my gosh, this doesn't exist. Of course it exists. There's all sorts of things that exist that you cannot have in, re in, in video conversation, right? Like, I know you want a video call to work, but a video call is not going to be the same as in person. 
And if you don't believe me, I want you to solve your next 10 fights with your significant other via video call. I want you, I, I want you just to rate how well that goes. Just why don't, you, why don't you just go solve all your problems via video calls? Everyone here is single, right? <laughs> Good luck. Like, it's just, it's going to be really hard because somehow in person just works a little bit better. I personally don't want to have a divorce. So I'm going to actually call, I'm going to actually be with my wife in person. That's a horrible idea. Why would it be a horrible idea? There's no difference. I do because I can communicate. I can tell right away you can't communicate by the words you're using. If you think your communication's perfect, it's not. Just like my communication's not perfect. Written communication is literally impossible. Okay? Because the problem with written communication is that you, the writer, may not have the same emotions as the reader. The reader may simply read it different because of what just happened five minutes before this. You don't even know. Right? That's why in person, again, makes such a big difference. I mean, let's see, I've worked remote for the last five years and enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I'm not even, I, I'm not arguing with, I like remote work. I'm just not a fool to what remote work, the, where I lose on remote work, okay? I know that I lose certain things. You will be probably passed up on more promotions. If you have a 90% in-office work and a 10% out-of-office work, you will probably be passed up on more promotions and things simply because you're remote. Because there's a huge part of work that's just being chums with people. This is a very big thing for some people. Some people just feel as they just they they're you're not as happy being away from people. Some people are more happy being away from people. It's sadly true. Networking is just a, a just an off it's just an awful part of real life. Neither performance nor inclusion improves in office. Certain talent segments, women and millennials, whose organizations had implemented mandates were actually negatively impacted compared to those at organizations that had not. Nearly two-thirds of employees report they work best in remote environments. They also report higher feelings of inclusion in remote environments versus on-site. I, I mean, I feel like no shot on this one. I feel, I mean, I, I personally feel that this has to be no shot. How do you feel more included being remote? I, I have to understand that. And by the way, this whole, the women and millennials question is kind of interesting in the sense that millennials are probably the most likely age to have young kids. And so would they feel more resentful about the mandates? Probably, right? Something about that says that they probably align very well on that. Here's, here's actually kind of a weird observation, is that when you're in office, you get questions like, want to go to lunch, right? This is just a non-work question altogether. When you are remote, you almost exclusively get questions related to work. And what I mean by that is like, hey, X isn't working. You work on X. I feel like you get much more kind of like, you get much more work-only responses. At least that's what I found. I got a lot more work-only responses when I, when, I was ac when I was remote. Well, when I was in office, I'd get a lot less work-only things. And now some people could say that's a positive. I'm not saying it's not a positive because some people don't want to go to lunch. It's good though. I think that's a very that's a very personal question, whether it's good or bad. That's good and bad. I like I like being asked to go to lunch. I like asking people to go to lunch. Every interaction was a meeting while working remote. Yes, that's see for me it was all meetings. Casual chat can be very toxic. I don't know what that even means to tell you the honest truth. I don't believe Gartner. I don't know what Gartner does or what they do, but I, I, I truly do not believe, believe this statement. I don't know if two-thirds of employees work best in remote environments. I don't know if – I think what – if anything, it probably says two-thirds of employees hate commuting, right? That's probably what we really are hearing right now is commuting absolutely sucks. And maybe like 20% don't want to be asked to lunch, and they just want to do work and leave. Or maybe 30% do. Maybe 40% do. But somehow I just doubt some of these. And, and the whole like feeling more included in remote, I just, I'm just calling pure BS on that one. Uh, high performing employees report a 16% lower intent to stay in the face of on site work requirements. Um, I'd love to see how much data they use to get this, but I would just simply assume that it has everything to do with the availability right now. Okay. RTO mandates carry us some small positive impacts. Employees may put in more effort in office where they feel more closely monitored. Well, I mean, do, don't destroy your own arguments against remote work. <laughs> what? It's like you, you designed this entire thing. 
and there's an entire culture around people don't slack. And then you're like, oh, but also people tend to be uh, more on the ball when they're in the office than out of the uh, than out of the office. And you're just like, which one is it? Which one are we talking about? Uh, others may be more inclined to help colleagues with their workloads as their struggles are more visible or because closer pro uh, proximity makes it easier to ask for support. I personally did find uh, that I would take more time to ask a question because f even just the thought of formulating my question into text was really, really difficult as opposed to like grabbing a whiteboard and trying to draw it out. I always found that I always found that I had a higher a higher barrier to ask questions out of office than in office. I'm not sure if that's just, you know, likely how I, you know, being at Netflix, it was kind of like one of the requirements is to be we uh, willing to ask questions and to be and to answer questions. So you're not a hey messenger then. Dude, no, F that, dude. I banned people nonstop for that. How many of those times would you say you rubber ducked an answer? I mean, eventually I rubber ducked an answer just because I'm purely willing to just spend an inordinate amount of time trying to figure out my own problems. And then often during an inter uh, during a, what's it called? The, during a code review, they're like, oh, why didn't you just use this? It's like, well, I didn't ask. And they're like, oh, you should have just asked. You know, I had a hard, uh, personally, I have a hard time reaching out via text. I find that it's very hard to really formulate my question well. I have the same disease, yeah. Get the hell out. What, who did flip ban? Some of us have hobbies and friends outside of work prime. Get the hell out of here! Can you believe what this guy just said? He's saying that this isn't his family. Okay, if the startup is not your family, then what the hell are you doing at the multi-billion dollar startup? You think I'm just going to not give you stock for any reason? No, I want you in here every day. So I said that to the guy, and then I kid you not, flip, jump, kicked his laptop. Like literally left off the ground, feet flying in air, did some sort of like scissor kick. I think, he, I think they call it scissoring. He scissored their laptop. I'm not really sure. Knocked a clean out of his hand. It was incredible. Is this article for tech or all professionals? Uh, I'm not really sure. Managers who have arguably experienced the most significant change in their day-to-day -day work with the shift to hybrid or remote work and likely and likely the most anxiety saw the greatest benefits from RTO mandates. But yeah, this chart doesn't make any sense much like this article. I don't I don't know what he just said and I don't think he does either. Um, I think would assume that managers actually potentially have one of the greatest remote benefits ever. And here's why, is that all managers do are meetings or write docs. I would just assume that if you're always, if your life is just scheduled meeting to scheduled meeting to scheduled meeting, video call or not video call, yeah, you probably have better communication. You probably have better established relationships. There's probably a bit more small talk. But nonetheless, it, it feels like you'd be impacted a little bit less because this is already what you do anyways. They just wander around and bug people. Then your job is probably not real. It's probably not real. It can be draining. I could imagine it be draining. This is why I never want to be a manager. I never want to be a manager. I don't blame you. Play games all day and say the Zoom camera's broken? Absolutely. More time in the office likely provides managers with a sense of familiarity with their employees and gives them greater visibility into direct reports workflows. Ah, Hello, fellow humans. All right. Flexible approach uh, yields the best results. Uh, the benefits of in-office times are real. After all, in-person connection can be energized. However, flexible human-centric hybrid models yield more positive results than one-size-fits-all approach. Garner recommends HR leaders co-develop policies, not mandates. Best practices include consider focusing are focusing employees' on-site attendance around specific regular activities, brainstorming, uh, and occasional events, off-sites. Organizations that took this approach saw the best talent outcomes. All employees to, in, let's see, allow employees to influence the policy. Employees who had the opportunity to shape their team's hybrid work arrangements demonstrated higher engagement and effort. Provide a clear why for the requirements to work on-site. Companies that did that saw positive impacts on engagement, effort, and retention. Why? Because I said so. Overall, the great conclusion is remote work is great for work-life balance. People are more happy when they feel happier with their life. <laughs> Facts. Many might be more productive if they are happy. I don't know. The problem is, is I don't know if number one is true. I've seen remote work also be very destructive for some people. Because remote work, especially if you live in a city, your life your house, your everything becomes the place you work. And I've, I've seen a lot of people talk a lot about being unable to disconnect from the job. That actually by not having an office job, they find themselves working more. That they're unable to d disconnect from, from job. 
This is not like I I, I don't I, I don't know if this is necessarily like a one for one. So I can't say that your your first point's true. Your second point's obviously true. People are more happy when they feel happier. Like un like literally unarguable. Okay, I cannot unargue that one. It's actually real, true. A in fact does equal A for all A's. And then many might be more productive if they are happy. Probably true. I would assume that your productivity is probably proportional to your happiness. Like generally speaking, when um, like my wife and I are fighting, I am probably less productive just because I am less happy. When I'm less happy, I, my, my mind's distracted. I'm kind of, you know, I, I'm all I'm all over the place. So I, I could see I could see point two and three. Point two is obviously correct. Point three could very well be true as well. If true, then return true. Else return false. I, I do think. Well, yes, yes. I think what you're trying to say too many avocados is isolation makes things worse. This might be a U.S. problem because as soon as my eight hours are up, I, uh, I disconnect from work and I don't care about a thing. Yeah, it could be a U.S. problem, but I think it could also be a person problem. I've met plenty of people in the U.S. that also have the same thing. When their time is up, their time's up. COVID remote work felt different than remote work from now. Yep, I would say I would assume there's a lot of differences right now. Um, I don't know. I can't. The hard part is that you can't have an A-B test. Okay, let me say it this way. There's a couple reasons why Remote work is so specifically difficult to measure whether it's good or bad. One, you cannot A-B test it, meaning we can't create the same company twice. One in office and one out of office. Like that just does not happen because it, minimally you'd have to have different people working on it, which means you're going to have to have a huge variation of this, right? You'd actually have to have many, 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 many thousands of companies started in which two companies are actually started, one in office, one out of office, just to even know if productivity really is better in office or out of office. You can't, like, I don't think we can even say there's some sort of productivity gain or loss. Uh, but second, I think one thing that's really been hard on measurements is that we have this whole enshittification process, right? Like enshittification is real. And shittification is absolutely real. Like everything feels shittier over the last four years. Is this because of remote work? Is this because of COVID? Is this because of just us with the ever progressing desire to make more money from VCs, constantly pushing products to be released early? Is it because people are burnt out? Is it because of what? I don't know. I, I have no idea. I know people say greed, but I think that whenever you just blame it on one single thing, I think you're just simply being dim-witted, okay? I think it's a lot more difficult. Consumerism, because consumerism is the other side of the coin to greed, right? And shittification is a real, real problem. And so it's like, why are things just generally getting shittier? I don't know why things are generally getting shittier. And shittification is just a nonstop thing that's been marching forward Constantly, it gotta be the vaccines. It's probably the vaccines. I think the COVID vaccines clearly causing enshittification. Corporate greed has and is a bigger problem post COVID. I don't believe you. <laughs> I think they're greedy AF beforehand, and I think the greedy AF afterwards, right? That's a hell of a clip. Uh, it's still the same. I think that if you would have measured, I think it's the corporate greed is something that looks like this. If this is time, this is levels of greed. This is zero. This is one. I think corporate operates like this. Okay. It's just a straight line. Okay. I think before it was greedy. I think afterwards it's greedy. Of course, there is always going to be some company that doesn't operate this way as much and treats their employees significantly better. But you know, that's a rarity. Okay. I don't know. Like, I think it's exceptionally impossible to really understand if remote work is actually better. I think that this is a problem that we can argue about forever. And I think that if you just truly think one is better than the other, I don't know, I feel like you're just being too one-dimensional about it. And I think it's also a generational question. I think some people will find certain ways better. Like, you know, like I, I don't like VR that much, okay? There's a lot of people that can just sit in VR all day. Like, I'm just not that person. I'm just not VR guy, right? I, I mean, I like it. It's cool. Oh, it's super cool. But I also, do, you know, I also might throw up. I, you know, it's just like, I'm old, man. My, 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 my little, my little brain, my little ear, my little ear has a lot of bubbles in it. Okay. I just going to throw up now. Okay. VR causes headaches. Also, if you're young and you use VR, apparently it's extremely bad for long-term eyesight. Like, you know, there's a lot of very tricky things. It gets better over time. I'm sure it does, but I'm going to have to actually lean into it over time. Right. Uh, 
But again, I just think that these these arguments overall are one dimensional because there's aspects that are going to be better in one than the other. And you just have to choose what aspects you wish to maximize and which aspects you wish to minimize. Like me personally, I'm kind of pretty much up to the point where if you said I had to move to San Francisco, I would say no. If you told me that I had to commute for an hour a day, I'd say no. But that also means that I might have to get paid less. I may have less job opportunity. I may have less, you know, less specific opportunities. That's fine. But that's a, that's a, that's a choice I'm willing to make. Anyways, the name is the primogen. 